Hello there, Internet world. Uh, I'm Nathan De Silva, and today on the Bitching Punk Rock Kitchen, we're going to be doing Maple Pecan Twist today. Na 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 na! Thank you very much! Hello there. How are you? Today's episode, of course, we're going to be doing maple pecan twists. So I'll show you what we need to do for that. Um, first thing that, again, I'm going by recipes I've collected over the years. And this is from a newspaper from January 27th, 1999. So this is over 20 years old at this point. Simple math. Anyways, <laughs> um, it says in order to make the dough for this maple pecan twist, it needs two and three quarter cups of flour. I didn't have enough flour, but I did have some whole wheat flour that I also mixed in with regular flour. So fingers are crossed that that doesn't mess up the recipe too much when I go to make it. It says to just dump all of this stuff into a large bowl, which I'm doing to my left. Um, two tablespoons of sugar. Get that in here. Right. Teaspoon of baking soda, which I'll just, I'll guess it and just dump a little bit in. That's all I really tend to do with stuff like that. So let's do a teaspoon. That's probably more than a teaspoon. Um, let's see as well. And yeah, the last thing is a half teaspoon of salt. So I'll just do that. I'll measure this by hand. That should be about half a teaspoon right there. All right. And I'll just stir this up so everything's kind of mixed in here. Okay, let's see what else here. Cut in butter. Yeah, I'm looking at the instructions for this and I'm just starting to wonder if this is uh, badly worded. It says, cut in butter pieces until mixture is crumbly in a medium bowl. Actually, it just says, until mixture is crumbly. So I guess I'm throwing this in here, so. I've usually, I think it's about six tablespoons. That's usually about a half a cup. So that's what I'm gonna do on this. And that way, not, I don't even have to like, quote unquote, cut it. I don't understand what it means by that. Again, every once in a while, I'm probably gonna come across a recipe which is badly worded or badly done. Um, I've come across that a few times. So this should be Five and six. I'll just wash off my hands because butter is gross. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next here. It says. Yeah, it just says to mix this in really is really what it comes down to, so I'll do that. Chances are you're probably supposed to blend this in with a blender or something, but it doesn't actually dictate that in this recipe. Again, uh, the point of my show a little bit on this here YouTube thing, um, it's going to be warts and all. I'm going to come across stuff that isn't going to work. It's really just an experiment, so that's... You know, and have fun with it. That's really all it comes down to with this. So, um, let's see what we have here. So in a medium bowl, so in a separate bowl, I'm supposed to be making a whole bunch of different stuff here. So, I'll just grab another bowl from underneath. I think 
think that's medium? <laughs> we'll find out. Um, so let's see. It says whisk summer cream milk and egg. Now the problem is, is before I did this, uh, got got started, I realized I didn't have any eggs. So I'm actually gonna do this without an egg, and hope this turns out. Like fingers are crossed on this one. Let's pop that in the sink. So what you're looking for is a cup of sour cream. So I'm thinking, yeah, that's pretty much the rest of this. I used one cup already on something else earlier. So I'll dump that in. That's right, I just tasted the spoon. <laughs> I'll put this to the side here. What we got? What's next? Oh yeah, milk. So it's a cup of sour cream and a quarter cup of milk. Just take the quarter cup of milk here and mix it in. As my cats are playing in the background, being, yeah, being cats. <laughs> yeah, definitely amateur hour here right now, that's for sure. Um, so what does it say? What's the sour cream, milk, egg until smooth? Well, this won't be too much to really make it smooth. It looks like it's already got... whatever it needs out of it. So I'll do that, leave that alone. Stir into flour, make sure just until a dough forms, so. I just, I don't like to do things piecemeal. I just do it all at the same time. I know a lot of recipes are like, do it gradually. And I just, I do it right away. Just dump the whole thing in. this out so let's see what it turns into into here <clears throat> yeah. coming something that's for sure yeah, one thing I'm, I usually am careful about when I'm doing baking of any type, I try not to mix things together or have any missing ingredients due to what I've experienced in the past. So I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that this works out because in my experience, uh, nine times out of 10, for some reason, it goes off by just that little bit and it doesn't taste very good. All right, so let's do that. I'm assuming this is like a dough. It's, it's pretty much acting like a dough here. Apparently my cats want to be in the video. I can hear them jumping off of the chair and acting not very smart right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Turn dough out onto a floured surface and knead 12 to 15 times, roll dough into a 15 by 12 inch rectangle. Well, this is where I am not an expert at. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Chances are it's going to get sticky all over the counter and it's probably not going to work. So what I'm going to do, because I've learned from experience, I'm going to put flour on the cutting board and kind of start from that. now. Because I don't have regular flour, I gotta use this whole wheat stuff that I've got kicking around still. 
Just a word of advice. If you come across something that asks for whole wheat flour, I like regular flour because it's just, it works better with a lot more things. Um, and especially it's, I mean, it's got whole wheat in it. So if you're having to use flour for something that is like a breakfast or something like that, you're gonna have whole wheat in your breakfast or a lunch item or something. It just throws off the taste quite a bit actually. Um, Let's see what this turns into. I don't know how this is going to work out because this is pretty sticky at this point. Yeah, this is, the dough is quite, uh, I'm going to have to use the word moist right now. So we'll, we'll see how this turns out. And that probably turned off a bunch of people from watching this. Uh, <laughs> as soon as I said moist, it's like, oh. Turn off the video, he said the magic word. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how this is gonna pan out. This is, I think I may have used too much milk for starters. I noticed I probably put like half a cup in there, which is not a good idea, but. Oh yeah, it's all mushy on the bottom. Yep, yep folks. Or I, I think I'm going to have a failure on this episode. Oh well. It's going to be hilarious. Okay. I'll just cover the other part. I really don't know how this is going to end up or turn out or anything because this is very much, uh, this recipe is very odd. And the fact that I'm using, the fact that I'm using whole wheat flour does not give me a lot of confidence on this one. I'm sorry. Um, just whole wheat flour is one of those things that it, I've used it for a couple of things. It turned out fine. And then I decided to use it for a few other things and it wasn't so pleasant. So I could tell this is not mixed properly because I got a whole bunch of extra junk in here. Let's just see if I can get a little bit more onto the cutting board. I tend to use my cutting board because I don't want to make my counter really, really dirty. That's a bit of a mess to really clean up. I'd rather have it on the cutting board. That way I can actually soak that in water as opposed to my countertop, which you can't do. All right. Make sure you rinse your hands uh, for 20 seconds. That's my government announcement right there. So, okay, so what have I got next here? It says roll dough into, you know, I guess it's a 15 by 12 inch rectangle. Let's see, brush with melted butter. in for about, I don't know, 30 seconds in the microwave, usually melts it pretty good, or 35 seconds, something like that. Let's do that, let's pop her in. Um, I just tried to seal up my margarine lid with the sour cream lid. That's what you just saw. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. So you got your melted butter. I just tend to pour it on a little bit. Try not to burn myself with it either. Right. 
it says to brush it, I usually just take a tablespoon and just do this to it. This is what works for me. I don't have a brush. Um, I used to have a brush and then I was getting pieces of the brush in my food. So I just threw it out and I haven't replaced it since. Um, so yeah, this should be fine. Just brush that on. we got here okay so I have to make the filling for it so I'm gonna pause the video right here and I'll come back um, right away and we'll show you how to do the filling all right we're back you missed me anyway um, the next part is the filling I've already put um, one third a cup of syrup in here it might be a little bit more. Well, it's going to show a little bit more because I threw the pecans that was asking for in there already. It was saying to have, um, what was it? Uh, one and a third cups of finely chopped pecans. I realized I did not pick up any extra pecans. I only had like maybe about half a cup, if that. So, <coughs> pardon. I just threw that in. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to see if that's enough for the filling here. It's also saying um, to put in three tablespoons of brown sugar. I've had my brown sugar in the pantry for quite a long time, so it's nice and hard, unfortunately. I didn't, I don't really put a piece of bread in here. That's what you're supposed to do is like put a piece of bread in or something like that. I usually just roll it up and hopefully no air gets in, but this has been in my pantry for maybe two, three months. So I don't use brown sugar very often. Just gonna put the three tablespoons, which should be this amount right here. If I can get this out. There we go. All right. I'll just have to stir that a little bit and get that going. And it says a teaspoon of cinnamon as well. So I've got my cinnamon right here. Pop this over here. But yeah, it's saying to do this as a filling, but obviously I'm going to have to roll this up or something. Um, so I'm kind of curious as to how this is going to be done. I'm probably going to just do it straight up in the pan that I'm throwing in the stove so that way my counter is a bit clean. That's maybe a little bit more than a teaspoon, but it should make up for the lack of pecans, I guess. So we'll just say that for now. Um, try to stir this up, maybe break down some of the sugar, because you definitely don't want a lump of brown sugar in there. So. It's slowly going down, but it takes a little bit to do. So yeah, that's the number one thing I'm trying to get done here is break down these chunks of the brown sugar because you definitely don't want that happening here. It smells good, I'll give it that. Let's see what else we have to do here. It says to sprinkle the filling over half of the dough along the edge. I don't know how that's going to work. It says fold the dough over the filling and then cut into 15 one inch wide strips. And then twist the strips about three times and place on baking sheets. I'm going to just put this straight up into the baking sheet itself and kind of go from there and see what I get. Still trying to cut down some of this brown sugar so I don't have any lumps in here. 
which might, but I'll just keep stirring and see what we can get. All right, I'm gonna pause the video here so that way I can show you the next step. All right, so this next part, I decided to grease up um, my pan that I use. Yeah, it looks like it's been used quite a numerous amount of times, but it, it's been around for a while. So um, I greased this up, I threw the dough in, and I'm gonna put the toppings in on top of it and fold it over and cut it. As for the twisting part and all that, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that without really ruining the dough because it's so loose. I might just leave it in strips so that way it's edible and I don't have to mess with it. But it's saying here to do twists um, about three times, place on baking sheets, and pressing the ends onto the sheets. Sounds kind of weird. It says to bake it at 400 Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes. So, Let's see here. It says do this along the edge. I'm just gonna do this a little bit all over here. Give this a good rinse here. Get some water in that. So, let's see. Fold the dough along the filling. No, fold the dough over the filling. Well, we'll see how this turns out. This is all crumbled. that put this over This is more like it. This looks a bit better. Unfortunately, some of it's got a hole in it over here on this side, probably because it's really moist on this side here. That's fine. What I will do, just rinse my hands here. 20 second wash. Uh, all right. <laughs> Grab a knife and just like that. I know I'm probably not supposed to do this in the pan because it's going to leave marks, but I know this pan's on its last legs. So I don't mind replacing it at this point. Make sure it's separated. And the last one, of course, it's gonna come apart as I'm cutting it right at the end, because that's all mushy. All right, so yeah, we'll pop this in for about 10 minutes and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. At the, um, I'm gonna show you the uh, last part uh, that we have here. This is after it's been in the oven. As you can see, some of the filling has come out um, a little bit here and a little bit at the top, but that's easy enough. If you've already 
sprayed your pan like I have, that should be a little bit easier to get off. Otherwise, you know, it's sugar, it's going to burn to it if you don't cover it like that. So, um, the last few ingredients, it said to put three to four tablespoons of milk together along with a cup of confectioner or icing sugar, um, as well as a tablespoon of maple syrup. So I basically made this little concoction, which is, it's basically icing is really what it is. You wait about 10 minutes after this is out of the oven. You sprinkle this on top like so. And that's pretty much it. Like you maybe wait another 10 minutes for this to maybe solidify to it. And you got yourself uh, the maple pecan uh, bars or whatever we made here i don't even have my i don't even have the instructions in front of me for so i forgot the actual name but it's finished that's the important part it's finished right so but um yeah that's pretty much uh that for today's recipe this next segment is a first um for my show um the past couple of times first couple episodes really I was just it was basically speeches in regards to certain things that you can do kind of like just a conversational piece this sec this time um, I want to do something um, positive and very helpful but yet it, it kind of goes with the the bitchin punk rock kitchen uh, theme that I've got going on here the thing is, is that I really enjoy music and I want to do something that would assist other musicians, um, especially with what's been going on right now with uh, COVID-19, uh, which definitely hasn't been helping any musicians that, that are out there right now. Um, shows are being canceled. Uh, record releases are being canceled or postponed. Um, so I wanted to give an avenue to some artists that I enjoy or that I come across that are, you don't really hear about them on the radio, so to speak, or maybe it will be songs from popular artists that aren't really well, well known, um, just to kind of do a little promotion work for them is really what it is right now in this time when people that, you know, ha are in the entertainment industry could use a little bit of promotion somehow. Um, I've enjoyed music since I was three years old and learned to use a record player and I've always wanted to be in the music industry in some aspect of it and never really quite got into how to do that sort of thing. I've always been the kid that grew up with headphones on his ears that always listened to everything. Um, and that like pretty much 50% of my wardrobe is band shirts and I just, that's my thing. So what I decided would be a good idea and I had to sit down and think about this because I know that there could be per repercussions on this. And then I thought about the timing and I, and I just thought, let's just do it anyway. And just see if any repercussions actually happen. I'm actually having the opposite effect where I've been talking to some artists and musicians and they think this is a fantastic idea um, where maybe the record label can't do anything. Well, I'm an alternative to that. I can post, you know, a song of theirs on here, post what their new album is, like an image of it while the song is playing, and post a link in the comments in my... Uh, of the video um, describing where you can go and buy their record right now or um, get their upcoming record or maybe buy some of their older stuff. And it's been gelling up here for a while. And I ran it by a couple of musician friends of mine and they thought it's a great idea. I'm going to give it a shot and just see how this grows. Um, what I also decided to do is if there is an artist that I feature on this uh, cooking show slash punk rock show. I don't know really how to it's it's very different And that's what I wanted to do is something different um, If there is however um, a video that is featured and the artist does not want it what I've decided to do I will post an email address at the end of this video um, Where you can contact me or if you have positive things you want to send me or there's a band you want to have featured on here 
or there's an unreleased song or something like that that you've been wanting to have get out there and have people listen to it, this is a perfect avenue for that. I just, I want to do this in a positive way because I know there's a lot of, you know, backlash that could happen out of this and I'm not trying to see the negative on it. There shouldn't be any negative. So I'm just going to go straight forward and get started here. The first artist, um was basically what I did last year. I started listening to a different different YouTube bands I would come across. I came across this artist. I've come across Skating Polly. I came across, um, oh, what's the name? There's a few. Uh, Screaming Females, that's one of them. Um, and a few others. Like I just started listening to some of these bands and it seems to me right now that there is a large amount of female grunge bands that are coming out and I'm definitely for that like that's the best way for me to put it there's like a female grunge presence that seems to be happening no record labels really jumping on that and saying frunge or coming up with some term for it I've come up with frunge because I think that's really the best name for it um, there's Cherry Glazer as well as another one that comes to mind. Um, I just think this would be a good idea to post a video of one of theirs. And the first one I'm going to play is Anna Birch. Um, Quit the Curse was her album that came out two years ago, I believe, 2018. I got really into that album. It's a really, really well done album. And I'm not big into singer songwriters, but I really like that album, just the lyrics and everything. It just spoke to me. It was really well done. There's some really good riffs on there that, you know, I've tried to figure out on my own on guitar and stuff. And some of, I'm not used to chords and things of that sort. So it was a different avenue of music that I started to approach and started checking out. So it kind of opened my eyes a little bit. So she has a new album that's coming out on April 3rd. Today is March 30th. I decided um, when it was announced that I was going to buy, I like to buy records. So they had test pressings on Polyvinyl Records website. Figured I'd go and sign up and get a test pressing. I don't have a test pressing at all in my records. And I figured it'd be a great way to appreciate the artist. Um, looking back on it now, it seems like I did the right thing considering like right now her tour is canceled. There isn't much for promotion. Uh, she's got a few music videos that have come out for the new album. So I, I will post where you can get her, you know, music from, and I'll post that in the comments for sure. This next track of hers isn't on any of her albums. And one thing that I pride myself on is I like to find songs that are, either unreleased or you can't find them usually in the proper way. This next song, I, I, first time I heard it, I loved it. I absolutely fell in love with it and I'm amazed it's not on any of her albums. So this track is called You Bum Me Out and it's off of uh, her first split single, actually. Enjoy. <laughs>
This next band that I'm going to play, I saw them open um, about, maybe it's been eight months ago, roughly. Um, saw them open for a band, my favorite band now, uh, Skating Polly. Saw them open for Skating Polly. And the name of this next band is Death Cassette. Um, they're really, really good. Um, I want to, you know, basically acknowledge that this band was the last concert that I went to before everything shut down for COVID-19. As a matter of fact, we weren't even sure if that concert would be going on, um, but it did go on and I went to it and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, it was their CD release party. So they literally released their CD right before COVID-19 shut everything down, um, which puts a big hamper um, as to what they can do. They had a whole bunch of concerts lined up Looks like they're all canceled or delayed. I don't have a lot of people that are on this channel really watching, but if it flourishes a little bit and word of mouth gets around, then I, I'd be more than glad to help them out any way possible. So this next song is off of their CD. Um, it's called Werewolf. I decided this would be a great track that would, you know, give you an idea as to how this band is. And they're pretty phenomenal. And uh, yeah, I again, I posted a link to their Bandcamp page. So you can go ahead and buy the record straight from there digitally or whatever you need. So um, here it is, Werewolf. guitarist is Clem Creevy. She apparently had been doing a lot of her own demos and stuff like that since she was like 14, 15, something like that. And um, a lot, like I never really got into their older stuff, but their last two albums have been absolutely phenomenal. As a matter of fact, uh, their last album that just came out, Stuffed and Ready, which is what this track is from, I think it's one of the best albums I've heard all year um considering we're in march 
I would say in the last year. We'll go with that, in the last year. Um, <coughs> pardon. Uh, I, I got really into this band a little bit, to the point that I bought like an advanced copy of the record. Um, it's like red vinyl and everything, it's really cool. They haven't come to Winnipeg, uh, which is where I reside. They haven't come here yet, but if they do, it'd be awesome, and I would definitely go to it uh, if uh, Death Cassette opened for them. That'd be perfect. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm going to play a song that really we're all going through with the whole shutdown of everything. Well, I use the term lightly, shutdown. I'm still seeing quite a few people outside, actually, today. Um... So this next track is called Isolation. I think it's one of the highlights of the record. And here you are. So isolated purchase their stuff through their website or what have you in the comments of my video. Um, they're a fantastic band from the song that I heard, so here's the song that I listened to. Here you go. The elevator opens for no one And plans are making me I'm paralyzing to you and plans are making me And plans are making me Everyone looks like 
like everyone Just like snowflakes are already now You're too busy to accept it And we already met Everyone Passing days just like bus comes This one time this friend of mine No way that was me No way that was me They are better open for no one It's talent's alright This next track is pretty much what some of you may be waiting for right now. Um, I managed to get myself, I guess, an advanced copy of one of the songs from Johnny Sizzle's new album. It was supposed to come out this month. It's definitely not going to happen with what's happening um, unless things change. There is that possibility. So I decided it would be a good idea to post that um, right here for you. It's called I Fuck the Devil. Todd, don't you wince It's needless for you to solve I laid down with the unthinkable I even gave the devil a blow job I got on top of him I looked him in the eyes We kissed mischievously I fucked the devil but the devil didn't fuck me I fuck the devil You know I fuck the devil But the devil didn't fuck me I fuck the devil Yeah, I fuck the devil
HIV I fucked the devil but the devil didn't fuck me Once again, thank you for uh, watching this. I would like to take a quick moment to thank Marty and Mandy for uh, assisting me a little bit in regards to the music side of things uh, and giving me some feedback um, on this idea of mine. Uh, I'm glad you guys think this is a great idea. We'll see how it goes. Um, one step at a time, right? Baby steps right now. So want to thank everyone. And again, uh, my email address will be posted right here for you um, in case you have any comments, concerns, questions, or maybe there's, you know, you have an idea as to what band I should uh, post on here next. All right, take care.